In the next couple of minutes, I would explore how oral history can be a strong tool to make our collections more diverse and inclusive, and how institutions and curators can utilize oral history to tell more complex stories. Although it is widely being used to investigate the roots of the collection, oral history can also be a strong source of curatorial narrative. The partition of India was one of the most defining events in the history of the Indian subcontinent. With no accurate accounts of how many died or lost their homes, estimates suggest that perhaps up to 20 million people were affected by the partition and about 1 million lost their lives. I have been documenting oral history for a long time. Before, the death toll and migration were just statistics for me. Now, there were different million experiences and stories that deserved the center stage. The partition of India led to the largest mass migration in human history, with an estimated 15 million people being displayed, displaced. While interviewing, I started to wonder how the traumatic series of events were interpreted in Britain. I therefore referred to the only archive available that was capable of answering this question, the British newspaper reports. I concluded that what was a life-changing and traumatic experience for millions of people in India was reduced to figures in British sources. The initial front page headlines were converted to a few paragraphs in the inner section of the newspaper. While the Indian nation suffered for decades and tried to overcome and rebuild, British attention to the partition and its consequences faded over time. This was also reflected in the cultural institutions around the world. With the talk of decolonization taking the center stage in the last decade, cultural practitioners and institutions started exploring these complex narratives. In the race to stay relevant, many institutions undertook projects which felt like tokenism. Such complex historical events cannot be justified through 20 objects in a room with no context or inclusivity in terms of collection and curation. The deep gorges that the British Empire left in its colonies' regional history, the bloodshed, and most importantly, the locals who remain voiceless and unrepresented, even in an exhibition ostensibly about their histories, made it a bad template for the future exhibitions to follow. Other institutions did not even try with the fear of either getting it wrong or the backlash it might receive from certain sections of the society. This led to a space that explored complex narrative without any research or repre representation since not a lot of work was undertaken. All the work was misdirected and it never reached the right audience. I believe oral history can play an integral part in making the narrative more diverse and inclusive. It adds an extra layer to the current narrative. It creates a rich world of storytelling around any type of collection, including works of art, archival documents, photographs, and material objects. Its methods can also shape a museum's relationships and reimagine its role as a custodian of collections. In museums, oral histories are often placed alongside other types of collections and offer exciting ways to reflect on historical sources. A collection of photographs can tell us a lot about the history, but an interview with the photographer and the subject might give us more insight on layers that might have been lost, like the context, personal experience, or the on-ground reality. Many museums used oral histories, connect with communities, and involve them in actively in museum projects and exhibitions. In some cases, this has led to the building of collectives that have a say in the museum's work and its narratives. Manchester Museum South Asia Collective does precisely this. Members of the South Asian diaspora in Manchester co-curated the museum's new South Asia Gallery, which opened in February 2023. Telling stories through the voices of South Asian residents of Manchester 
is at the heart of this project. Memories of Partition was part of Manchester Museum's engagement with local South Asian communities. Visitors with local visitors to the exhibition could find out about the experience and legacies of the creation of India and Pakistan in 1947 through the memories of the members of the Manchester South Asian communities. It addressed the sensitive subject by revealing the untold stories of partition on, on, on the local communities, multiculturalism and migration. Partition Museum in Amritsar is another great example. While it has a rich collection of personal artifacts and visual aids, the museum tries to incorporate lived experiences of partition survivors. This artifact belonged to Mohammed Nathur Bichol's great grandfather, who would light up this spot using dried coconut fibers and add sandal pieces, resulting in sandal incense covering the whole house with sandalwood smell daily after his morning prayers. The oral history anecdote bridges the gap between the artifact and the audience and it creates a lasting impact. The oral history program at the Panama Canal Museum collection was created to document the story of Canal in the words of the people who lived it, capturing the details of life that are often not discussed in publications, not captioned in photographs, or would otherwise be lost. I would like to touch base upon a project I've undertaken with the Migration Museum, wherein we try to highlight experiences of partition survivors, which would be visually supported by the folk tradition of Fulkari, which is a type of a textile. Through this exhibition, we aim to bridge the gap between the tangible and intangible heritage and pioneer oral history narrative in the mainstream curatorial space. On the screen, you can see a type of a fulkari called Sanchi. A descriptive caption of this textile would talk about the details like, here we can see a fulkari called Sanchi that depicts human and animal forms, often in a narrative format. The images in Sanchi fulkari are typical of life in rural Punjab. The embroidery is often a reflection of the artisan's world. If we were to incorporate oral history, it would add another layer to the narrative and assist the audience in connecting with the object. I would like to give you an example of an oral history I recorded for a similar textile. My fondest childhood memory is my mother embroidering the characters from the bedtime story she narrated to me every night. The vicious snake, the tall trees, the beautiful peacock dancing after the first train. It was magical. I guess she knew how this transported me to another world, which is why I feel she made it into a game while we were migrating to Jalandhar to my grandparents. You see the trees there? That's where the queen fought the head of the monkey kingdom. Look at the river and imagine her riding the boat with a sword in her hand, she said. A five-year-old child's imagination was not enough to overlook the blood around her. This is a fulkari called Chope, which is a wedding dupatta, which, represent, which is presented to the bride by her maternal grandmother and is worn during the bangle ceremony of the marriage. I would like to quote a partition survivor I interviewed and how she remembered her wedding dupatta. The beautiful lines and colors adorn my mother's head. I would dig one out of a collection, the bright red one, her favorite and pretend play every night. Every time I visited my baby, maternal grandmother, she would show me my fulkari, the one which seemed to have a new line or a new flower every time I visited. Bibi often said that she sits with it every time she misses me, making the fulkari a piece of her heart. I remember when I got married, the only thing I was excited about was getting Bibi Ke Dil Ka Tukra, which translates to grandmother's piece of heart. Little did I know that I would have to use it to carry my newborn child in it and by migrating and later burying her with it. While these lived anecdotes 
bridges the gap between the audience and the object. It also makes the curatorial narrative more personal and intimate for the audience to experience. It gives you an insight to history that was lost while displaying the artifact. Oral history humanizes the quantitative data and the artifacts and represents multiple unique individual experiences. Oral history has the potential of shaking the audience and connecting with them emotionally and giving them something that stays with them. I believe curation is a form of storytelling and oral history can be a great source to enhance it. Various tools that are a byproduct of oral history like community engagement and language are a great source to decolonize a narrative. Community engagement is a great device for the institutions to show themselves as the custodians of the collection with an obligation to the people who created the objects and their descendants. Community engagement is necessary to give sentimental justice to the people of the community, the objects belong to and raise awareness to others. Community engagement ensures cultural institutions are seen as a public space of dialogue and co-creation driven by shared dispersed generative and hands-on conceptualization of ownership. Language or the art language of the archive and display mirrors institutions thought process it impacts how people understand the exhibit the right language is really important so that institutions don't end up invalidating people's experiences and histories the right tone translation and pronunciation are small things that go a long way oral history as a source of curation is about reflections on the meaning of cultural institutions and who these institutions are intended to serve. It is about open and true dialogue with all members and communities and society. It is about sharing power and authority. Oral history will initiate cultural institutions in becoming learning communities. It creates room for multiple perspectives, showing the different contexts that determine how we look at objects or themes. I believe that museums should be for the people, by the people, and oral history does exactly that. It fills the essential pieces of the historical puzzle. Without these stories, valuable insight into the past, and many special memories will be lost. It is all about an intersectional approach that represents those affected by various historical events. Oral history has the potential to decolonize, make your collection and narrative more diverse and inclusive. Thank you.